Okay, so this is help, called Healthy Living, and we're going to be talking a little bit about diet, exercise, and some weight management. It's going to be very high level, um, not super nitty gritty into details because some of that, um, you know, you kind of want to put more personable to a person. And I figured for an introduction, it's it, this is a, a good introduction. And then if people want more, need more, um, additional webinars can be done and or more one-on-one -on -one can be done. Okay. So, um, is this like a one-on-one? -on -one or um, There might be a couple other people joining. Sometimes people get caught up, but Oh, okay. That's part of the reason we're recording, just in case somebody enters a little bit late. And I know there's a couple of the people that were going to be joining, but they got, I think, stuck. So, but we're going to get okay. started because it's already okay. So. I didn't want to take over the questioning, but no, you're fine. <laughs> um, so, just in the first part, we're just going to go over some basic things like a little introduction, social determinants and what they are, how they influence us, some little diet plans, good and bad things, some eating tips and allowing, allow people to enjoy eating. Okay. Okay. So super quick about me. Uh, my name is Laura Kibbe. My current position with Parkland Community Health Plan is a clinical quality investigator. Um, my background, I have been a nurse for over 30 years. I did start with an associate's degree, then went on and got a little bit more education. And I do have a master's degree in nursing in education. So, um, they kind of said, oh, you can do this. And I said, sure. <laughs> so, um, my primary focus as a nurse has been med surge. I love medical, um, you know, the, the things with working with patients, um, like new onset of hypertension and diabetes and, you know, weight management and things like that. But I've also done some orthopedics, um, pediatric home health hospice. And um, I actually got, got my initial starting back as a dietary assistant in a skilled nursing facility. So I've got a little bit of a background um, as far as that goes. Okay, so jumping right into it. Influences with um, social determinants. Now there's a nice list here, and this is actually from the Canadian Public Health Association, but it is like one of the best lists that I've seen um, available. I mean, there's some with, you know, the CDC and things like that, but I kind of like this one because it's got a little bit of everything. Um, not gonna necessarily go into 100% detail with everything because I think a lot of people have some fundamental ideas, but if you have any questions on anything I don't touch on, please make sure to let me know. Um, of course, some of the things that influence us are income and in income distribution, you know, and that also goes kind of jumping down a little bit with education, employment and job security, um, employment and working conditions. So, you know, we are influenced by what we're able to bring home because it influences what how much we can get at the store to bring home to put on the table to feed ourselves and family members or other people that live with us. Um, if you are in a position that doesn't necessarily, you know, you work part time or you work on call, um, there's people that do like ride share. You know, sometimes there's lots of people that need rides and then there's other times that they don't need as many rides. Um, during the pandemic, a lot of people that did um, the food service, you know, did like Uber Eats and things. Well, they had probably better job security then than they do now. So that'll influence on what we bring home. Um, early childhood development, how we're raised and what we have as advantages and disadvantages when we're growing up. Um, food insecurity, like I said, if you, without the correct income or without income, you know, we don't always know if we're going to have food on the table. Um, housing, you know, if a person is in an apartment complex that, you know, is illy managed, 
you know, they're not always good about making sure that all the appliances work. You know, if the refrigerator doesn't work, food spoils. If you don't have a good stove, you can't cook anything. So um, social exclusion, social um, safety network, you know, um, people that you know, live on the street, um, they're ex excluded from a lot of things like hot meals. Okay, um, health services, um, aber aboriginal status, national status, um, which kind of goes with like ethnicity and things like that and race. And when we're looking at race and ethnicity today, what we would get referred to with race is like a group sharing some outward physical characteristics and some common culture and history where ethnicity is a little bit broader. Type, which kind of includes the race, but it's, you know, culture and tradition and family bonds and things like that. Um, gender, you know, um, has some things to do with it. And disability, if a, a person has any kind of disabilities, they may have difficulty um, caring for themselves and making sure that they're fixing foods the right way or having foods available or knowing what to eat. Because people don't want to take the time because of whatever kind of disability, whether it's physical, mental, or whatnot. So, some dietary influences. Now, before I start with the next couple of slides, um, I am not, you know, encouraging anyone to do any of these particular plans, but they are a nice reference point to kind of talk a little bit about some influences we get with our diets and some pros and cons. Um, I'm not an advocate supporter of any of them. Um, have I tried a couple of them? Yes. Um, but you know, I'm not, my job is not to sway you one way or the other, especially when I talk about a couple of the things with them. So when I'm talking about dietary influences, for example, our diet plans. I mean, we hear advertised all the time about Jenny Craig and Nutrisystem and some of the other ones. I've got another slide with some additional ones. There's pros and cons to these. Um, they do, I mean, they are helpful. I mean, usually with Jenny Craig and like Nutrisystem, your, ma your meals are right there. You know, you purchase the plan and they supply the meals and you know, you don't have to kind of think about it too awful much. Um, some problems with um, either one of these particular plans are the costs. Um, these are approximate costs. And it, I did my research for numbers and things like that in March. Pardon me. So, you know, they run specials all the time and prices vary. And there's, you know, like with Jenny Craig, they, the meal pans, they've got simple, essential, and max up. So just depending on how much you want to spend or how much, you know, help you want to have and things like that is, you know, will definitely sway the cost. Um, the pros and cons to kind of work with some of these too. Um, I feel that some of these are sometimes a little bit easier for people who are either single or just with a spouse. When you've got a family and kids, um, your children may frown upon the fact that you want them to eat Jenny Craig or you're eating Jenny Craig or Nutrisystem and don't quite feel like fixing a full meal or, or whatnot for them. So I think sometimes they can be a little more work for people with a family. Okay, so but this is just to give a per some people an idea if they've not researched it on what the cost can be for these. Okay, uh, and again, because they are they already plan out your meals. They can be beneficial for someone, especially someone on the go or super busy. Um, a couple others are like Weight Watchers and Gnome, Gnome, I guess it is, is the way to say it. Now, I'll be honest, I have done Weight Watchers. And the one thing I will say I like about Weight Watchers that's a little bit different from the Jenny Craig and the Nutrisystem, which again, you know, I have nothing against them whatsoever. Um, is you use your own food with Weight Watchers. So it, it's a little bit, I think, more user-friendly for a family um, because some of the positive things you can think of, you can um, use even if you've got children. And it doesn't hurt with any of these to have a positive influence for our children. 
on what's the best way to eat and then more, most nutritional and things like that. Um, with the Weight Watchers, as it says, it also works with like four pillars. It talks about food, exercise, behavior, and support. Um, I believe some of the other ones may also, um, but they're just, they handle it all differently. I'll be asked, honest as far as new goes, because it's sort of new and it's just all of a sudden really been big on the TV. And I also heard about an, another one that's J, uh, Golo. Um, I heard about that after I'd already put this together, so I don't really have any information on that. Um, but I'm thinking it's similar to some of the other ones. Um, the costs, again, are on here. Um, the Weight Watchers in the Gnome seem to be a little bit less expensive, but I think part of that's because you, you with them you use a lot more of your own food. Um, going on to try to figure out you know how to do the particular criteria and things like that with the the gnome uh, or noom however they say it I'm sorry um, it has a very long questionnaire um, it was it takes a while to get to it but it does tell you you know that like to lose 50 pounds from March to October um, you know what you would need to do and how you would need to do it and the Price does vary based on what you want to, how much weight you want to lose and how fast you want to use it, lose it and things like that. So um, sometimes, you know, a physician may say, you know, and, and of course there's all those other diets too, Atkins, keto, um, and there's just so many, I can't even think of some of them. Uh, so sometimes if you want or need to use a diet plan, um, like some that I've mentioned, it's not necessarily that it's a horrible thing because sometimes it will help you um, learn proper ways of eating. It will help you get motivated um, and things like that. But of course, you have to look at your own individual circumstance and what your goals are and what your needs are. And again, like I said, if you're with a family, some of these are a little bit trickier to do. Okay, so diet plans, some additional information. The most important thing is you have to figure out what works best for you. And sometimes that also includes your family, um, what works best for you and your family. One of the things we've noticed and has been talked about frequently is the increase of children and adolescent obesity. Um, I can say as someone who reviews charts frequently, um, it's very kind of scary. We have a lot of, of kiddos, which I'm sure wouldn't appreciate me say, calling them the kiddos, but we have a lot of teenagers, you know, 15 to 19 that are overweight and already are having problems with diabetes and or high blood pressure, which is kind of scary because these are the, the young people that are going to be in their 20s and 30s having heart attacks and strokes, or potentially to do that. So when you're looking at diet plans for yourself, you want, want to consider what will help your family as well, because um, anyone who is a, a parent or a guardian of, of children, it doesn't hurt if we start teaching them good practices. Um, I can vouch that I was not always perfect at that, but um, it is something that we can at least try and implement with our children. Um, you want to pick something that you're going to be successful at. One of the most discouraging things with attempting weight loss or maintaining, if you, you've already got a healthy weight um, and you don't really want to lose any more, but you definitely don't want to gain any more, or you, you, know, you have your 10 pound weight goals that you want to stay within, um, you want to make sure you can be successful. So you want to make something that's going to choose something that's going to um, fit your lifestyle. You know, you don't want to go, you know, like I said, with some of those particular diets that if you're, you have family, you don't want to have a diet that's not going to be easy to do with children or grandchildren or, or whatnot. 
And one of the most important things people have to remember or try to remember is moderation. Don't go in gung-ho thinking, you know, if, if your particular needs are to reduce weight, which is what most of us, unfortunately, in the United States need to do, um, set realistic, moderate goals. Um, you may have a long-term goal of losing 50 pounds or 100 pounds or whatever. Um, do it in obtainable goals. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Okay. So next part, we're going to talk a little bit about metabolism, exercise, and maintaining that weight that we want to get to. Okay. First, metabolism or your metabolic rate. Okay, it's defined as a series of chemical reactions in a living organism that create and break down energy necessary for life. Simple thing, your body moves around and it breaks food down and it uses it for energy. What happens to us when we gain weight is we put in too much food or we put in food that is difficult to break down. Um, and therefore, our metabolism can't break it down fast enough. Um, a lot of us too, especially as we get a little older, our metabolism tends to unfortunately slow down. Um, it's an unfortunate thing that happens. So we have to be a little bit more cautious on what we eat and make sure that we're eating things that can get broken down quickly and that we do things to help our metabolism. The higher our metabolism, the healthier the body and the easier to maintain a healthy weight. Sounds really simple. Definitely not necessarily the easiest thing, unless you don't overthink it and you just kind of, you know, take it with a grain of salt. And in some ways it's really easy, but in some ways, yeah, it's a little tricky. So how do we boost our metabolism? Okay, so there's all kinds of different exercises and things that we can do. And one of the things that's kind of like a buzz thing right now is high intensity workouts. So what are high intensity workouts? Those are those high intensity interval training, which they call HIT. you know, where you will do like the um, cardios rapidly for five or 10 minutes, then have a little slow down and then do it again for five or 10 minutes. Um, I leave that personally to the younger people, but um, some other high intensity workouts are, you know, running or speed walking, climbing stairs, jumping rope, things that, you know, you're really moving and increasing your pulse rate, increasing your breathing a little bit. Um, and you really feel like you definitely worked out the, the cardio type things that people will do. Um, another thing that people can do to help boost their metabolism is muscle building. Now, muscle building has its pros and its cons, um, because usually to build muscle, you have to increase your protein. And if you're not care careful when you increase your protein, if you're not exercising and doing things to help build that muscle, it will turn to fat, which is harder to get rid of. Okay. Um, usually when a person gets on a muscle building program, it takes at least three to four weeks before you see any effects from that. Um, and this is a lot of times, you know, you'll get your, okay. And I don't mean to sound sexist when I say this, but generally, you know, it's our like 20 year old males that like to do the muscle building things. Um, though it's very popular with females now too. Um, but it does take about 12 weeks or so to really get to the goals that a person's trying to reach as far as getting their muscle tone and things built up. Um, it also, and this is where if you're not doing like a, a steady and continuous exercise program, um, you have to increase your calories because when you're building your muscle, muscle will build, burn more calories. Um, if you think about, um, oh my gosh, and I'm just drawing a blank, the little swim, Michael Phelps, um, the swimmer. I mean, he was on like a 5,000 calorie a day diet, um, but it's because he was trying to maintain his muscle and physique for his swimming. Um, for most of us, if we ate 5,000 calories a day, it would be a very bad thing. 
Okay, so another thing to think about and consider is to eat small meals and snacks every three to four hours, and that helps you to continue calorie burning, um, which a lot of people will think, oh, I just don't need to eat at all. I'll just stop eating or I'll eat just teeny, teeny, tiny bit a couple of times a day. And though we do want to kind of watch how much we eat, you still have to keep eating because your body has to have something to burn. It has to have something that's turning and breaking down. Um, yes, it will break down, you know, fat and things eventually, but it's got to have like a, a little jump start, a little stimulation. You know, um, <laughs> I use a little um, example of caffeine. You know, a lot of people need that cup of coffee in the morning to get them wake woke up and moving and going and and the whole nine yards. Um, or, you know, you need that chilly shower to, to wake you up and get you going. Well, food is the same thing. But if you eat just small, you know, consistent meals every three to four hours, that keeps your body at a constant cycle. Um, another thing is like people with medications, you know, antibiotics, they order them like every six hours. And it's real important you take them every six hours to get it in your system to keep it going and keep it at its peak. So eating is, is similar to that. Um, you want to incorporate protein and green tea into your diet. Now, um, the green tea, I, I'll be honest, I had to look that up. I saw that on something and I'm like, oh, green tea, which, you know, it's kind of tasty. Um, what it does is it helps uh, a person lose their viscular fat around their abdomen, which is the fat that increases our susceptibility or our chances of getting like cardiovascular diseases like hypertension or having heart problems, um, diabetes and breast cancer. Now, you don't want to go overboard with the green tea, like everything in life. Um, a, moderation is usually the best. Um, especially if you're not used to doing something or taking something, you don't want to overdo it. But the protein helps with the muscle building and the green tea, again, helps a little bit with the fat burning and breakdown. And that would only be like a couple glasses a day. Okay. Um, another thing that's very important, and I'll be talking about it again just a little bit too, is our water consumption. Um, now you hear all kinds of different things. The minimum that every person should have, or adult person, I should say, have is um, four to six cups. That's like the bare bottom. Now, here in Texas in the summer, you want to like double or triple that, especially if we're at triple digits. Um, but for helping with weight loss, believe it or not, for men, it is recommended or encouraged to take 15 and a half cups, which is about is over three liters of water a day. And for women, you and this is because you generally, not always, but generally women have a slightly bo smaller body frame. We're, you know, women and men, yeah, we're pretty equal, but there's still a couple of little differences in us. So we need just a little bit less water where we're at like 11 and a half, which is about equivalent to a little over two liters of water a day. Okay, so everybody should drink at least a half a gallon at a bare minimum. Okay, so another really important thing for us, if my slide will change, there we go, is exercise. And I know a lot of people, when people think of exercise, they think of the gym. Let's all go to the gym and work out. Well, you don't have to do that. There's, and you don't have to play football. I put that there. We're in Texas. It's a popular sport. So um, it's very good. If that's what a person wants to do, but there's things like basketball and swimming. Swimming is one of the best exercises that a person can do because it gets the whole body overall. I mean, you use your arms, you're using your breathing, you use your legs, um, you use your abdomen because it helps you support with your breathing and things like that. And you have resistance and support from the water. Um, now, if someone's not a swimmer or someone's afraid of water, um, if you can work with somebody to get in the water, that's awesome. Um, another thing is running. And of course, this I intentionally did this because you're never too young or too old to start doing exercise. Okay. Okay, slides. 
maybe. There we go. And this is just another little bit um, rowing um, ballet dance. Okay. I love this picture right here of the family. You know, you work out together and you don't have to do a lot. You know, you do stretches. There's these lovely exercise balls that they have nowadays that are just, you know, really cool to do all kinds of different things with. And usually, luckily, thank goodness, they come with something. Um, now, there's walks that people can go on. Um, I don't know if anyone has ever done one of those like Susan B. Anthony walks. Now, they've got the nice short ones, but then they have that three-day walk. And those women really, and families, I shouldn't say just the women, but, um, and men, of course, can get breast cancer as well. But, you know, they really have to work themselves up to that three-day walk because it really is pretty trying on a person. But, you know, just walking, you know, there's no limitations. There's no excuses for any of that, us not to exercise. There's no disability that can stop us because there's still something a person can do. You know, on the prior slide, you know, this person's in a wheelchair. They're playing basketball. You know, this person's a senior person and they're out there running and jogging and things like that. You know, again, the family and then a person that has Down syndromes. There's no limitations for ourselves except ourselves from getting some sort of exercise, even just going for a walk in the park or around the block, you know, once a day is a good way to start. You know, and you want to, if you're a person, you know, honestly, like myself, who's not getting as much exercise as they should be, you don't want to go run a marathon the first time that you go out and exercise or try to do even a hundred sit ups, you know, or push ups. You know, you want to start with set your goal for five push ups and five sit ups and just to, you know, walk five minutes outside if in the early. If, it's not too hot yet, but in the early morning, in the afternoon, or later, later evening, um, you know, get yourself in a routine and in a habit. Um, if you have children, get them involved. You know, start those practices that help them as they get older too. Okay, so maintaining weight, just some little tips here um, to kind of help help along the way. Okay, drink plenty of water. We kind of already touched base on that, on how much water each individual needs to eat or eat, drink um, to sustain and help. And water does make you feel full. So if you want to drink six ounces of water before you eat because you're afraid you might overeat a little bit, then you can go ahead and do that. But don't drink so much water that it makes you too full that you're unable to eat at all because then that kind of defeats the purpose. One very important thing that a lot of us are guilty of is we skip breakfast. Remember, I was talking about with the metabolism, getting it jump started and getting things going. Well, the best way to do that is to eat breakfast because um, that, that'll get you jump started, get you going. And you'd be surprised now if you need to take a few minutes and maybe go for, you know, drink a glass of water, go for a quick little walk and then come back and eat breakfast. There's nothing wrong with that. But the important thing is, is to go ahead and make sure you eat breakfast. Keep the same eating patterns daily. And it does take anywhere from 14 to 21 days to develop a routine of something. So don't get don't get discouraged or give up just because after five days you, you realize you didn't do it exactly the same or, or similar to how you did it the day before. You know, it takes time to develop patterns in a routine in something, but always try to eat at approximately the same time every day because that gets your body adjusted to when the food is coming in and when you're going to be, you know, doing certain things. And again, if you're, if you're able where you can do the three to four hours and have a small meal or do, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and make sure you have just a small snack in between. Um, and some of your snacks could be, you know, you want to eat plenty of fruits and vegetables. Well, make a snack, you know, an apple or some carrot and celery sticks or cucumber slices or, you know, whatever you happen to like. Some other good um, snacks are things like yogurt 
Um, be careful. I mean, the protein bars and stuff are good. You want to be careful though, that those you're not eating like six of those a day, because, you know, again, that's a lot of protein. And if you're not burning off some of that, um, it can stick to you. Watch your food choices. And this is something too, that we need to make sure we're, um, you know, spreading on to our family members and things too, and sharing with them. So we want foods in low that are um, low in saturated fat. So that would be things like chicken and fish and most of our fruits and vegetables and even dairy products, as long as you're doing, which I know some people cringe when I say this, but that you're doing that 1% or skim milk, you know, or the cottage cheese with the, the lesser fat, um, because you don't want the extra fat that you're going to have to have more work to break down. Okay. Um, you, so you want to avoid things like, you know, cheddar, Swiss, or American cheese because they're higher in the saturated fats, um, which aren't very, very healthy for us either. Um, you want to do some low carbs and low sodium foods. So a lot of that are the same foods that I already match, mentioned as far as the, um, low and uh, saturated fats. You know, so our fruits and veggies, those those are going to be our go to's all the time is our fruits and our veggies for the most part. Um, things like corn are good for you, but you have to be careful because they can be a little bit more of a carb because, you know, the corn and things um, you want. Um, let's see. Oh, whole grains. I was going to skip right over our whole grains. So whole grains are things like our oatmeal popcorn without tons of salt and without tons of butter. Um, I know that just took all the fun out of the eating popcorn, but you'd be amazed if you just put just a little bit of salt and just a little butter, you get kind of used to it. And it's actually kind of tasty. Um, barley, brown rice, buckwheat, whole wheat bread. You know, um, we want lean protein. So again, that's our our white fishes, plain Greek yogurt, pea, peas, beans, lentils, um, let's see, tofu, uh, lean beef. You know, it's not like you have to strictly, if you're a person who enjoys eating beef at times, um, you don't have to like totally wipe that out of your diet. Just make sure you're getting the leaner. Um, things like hamburger, if you look in the grocery store and things, it comes in like 70, 30 and 80, 20 and 90. I think there's one that's like 93 um, and seven. So you just get the leaner um, red meat. Yes, does this sometimes increase your grocery bill? Sadly, yes, because it's healthier. However, what you'll find out is if you're buying the healthier food and you're buying less snacky foods, um, it balances out. You know, if you're skipping past, you know, the chocolate chip cookies, one of my weaknesses, um, and getting some extra carrots or um, some low sodium uh, wheat crackers, you know, it, it balances out and you feel better, you know. Okay, so once in a while, cookies, not a bad thing. We'll get into that in just a second. Um, okay. And then of course, physical activity. Now this does say at least 30 minutes daily, and it includes any type of exercise. So, and it doesn't have to be 30 minutes all in one sitting. So like if you take a 10 minute walk in the morning, a 10 minute walk, say before you go to bed, and then you stretch for like 10 minutes in the afternoon or something, well, there's your 10 minutes of or excuse me, your 30 minutes of physical activity. So it doesn't have to be done all at once. You don't have to feel like you have to go, you know, get a treadmill and get on your treadmill for 30 minutes every day. No, just, you know, I'm one that says use what you've got around you. Um, as far as like doing stretches and things, use a railing if you've got stairs. There you go. If you've got stairs, you've already got workout equipment. Go up and down your stairs three or four times a day um, if you don't already. And I mean, that's perfect. You know, it works your cardio. It's physical activity. Um, and you probably are doing it more than one time a day. Okay. Okay. Something that's very, very important. 
moderation. Um, one of the ways to be most successful when you are attempting to lose weight or change your diet and start getting healthy is do not 101% say, okay, I'm never eating dessert again. I'm never going to have a piece of birthday cake. I'm never going to eat cookies. I'm never going to buy my Starbucks coffee. Okay. Personally, okay. I'm one of those bad people. I enjoy Starbucks once in a while. Pardon me. But moderation. It's better to say, okay, um, every Sunday I'm going to allow myself um, a cookie or dessert, you know, piece of cake, something like that. Because one, it gives you a couple of things. One, it gives you something to look forward to. It's a treat for yourself. Now, when I say a piece of cake, I'm not talking, you know, like half the cake, you know, just a normal slice of cake. But it also helps that craving. Um, you know, keep a bag of Hershey's Kisses or, you know, something that comes in little pieces or something somewhere so that if you're really, 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 really craving a piece of chocolate or a gummy bear or, you know, something that's a treat to you, allow yourself just a little bit of that treat. Okay. Um, you know, so uh, the example of candy kisses, allow yourself you know, you really get feeling like you, you really need to have a piece of chocolate or something. And if you don't eat it, you're going to go insane. Okay. So go out and get yourself three candy kisses for an example. What that does is it allows you to have your treat and it keeps you from binging, which is something that a lot of people have a problem or concern with. You know, they, they keep saying, oh, I can't have it. I can't have it. I can't have it. And then they finally sit down to have something like a piece of steak, you know, and instead of getting just the like six ounce steak, they get the 12 ounce steak and eat the whole thing. So if you allow yourself those little treats, it helps you fix your craving and avoid you from completely binging, you know, and not feeling successful. Um, because one of the things is to make sure that you're successful and not feel guilty. Like, okay, I need a piece of candy. I ate my candy kiss. Oh, I feel better. I had a candy kiss. And you know what? That's not really that many calories. I'll do five extra stairs today. That'll help that. But you'll feel better in the long run. Um, because one of the secrets for success is to do that. Now, I've talked mostly about weight reduction or ways to kind of reduce rate, weight. Um, there are people out there that have problems with things like um, bulimia and anorexia. There are ways to work on gaining weight. Um, if you're on medications or if you're doing anything, do, you know, make sure you're talking with your physicians about if you're going to start a diet or if you're going to be doing certain things monitoring what you eat over the counter you know fruits veggies you know watching lean meats and things like that usually shouldn't be a problem but doesn't never hurts to talk to your doctor and let them know what you're planning um, depending on any health history they may encourage you to do one thing over another or say, now make sure though, um, there are some cardiac medications out there that you can't have grapefruit. So they'll, you know, may want to give you reminders. Remember, you got to avoid citrus with this particular medication or avoid something else with another medication. Um, also, before you start anything like, you know, like I said, I'm not trying to encourage or discourage, but if someone is wanting to do Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers or anything like that, make sure you talk to your doctor about it um, so that they know. Um, doctors are always happy and pleased if someone is gaining weight because that's something that they need to do or losing weight because weight stability, um, meeting that, you know, basic targeted weight goal. You know, you look on those charts and it says if you're, you know, small, medium, large frame, if you're male, if you're female, if you're this height, if you're that height, there's goal, you know, target weights or, you know, the healthiest weights 
that a person may want to, to try to be at. And on occasion, sometimes a medication, you know, for high blood pressure or diabetes might be able to be decreased, but you absolutely positively should never change medications or start anything too drastic without consulting with your healthcare provider first. Um, just want to make sure I, I have that, you know, nice and clear for everybody. I don't want anyone to go over the edge one way or another. And if you are under the care of a healthcare provider to, to please make sure you consult them too. Okay. Um, if you do need additional assistance or additional information or have questions or have suggestions for other topics, um, you know, if there's something that I've mentioned that, you know, you'd like to see expanded in another webinar or something, um, here's my information. Um, also, if you are a member of Parkland Health um, Community Health Plan, my apologies for the background noise. Um, uh, be sure to reach out to member services because we do have programs and initiatives for people as far as, you know, gyms and exercise programs and things like that. So be sure to contact member services to see if you might be um, applicable or eligible um, for some additional assistance. Okay. And are there any questions? comments, concerns. And as I said, the, the webinar, once I figure out how to do it, will get posted. So my information will be available. Um, and as well as that for member services, which that also should be on your, your card or if you get in through the website. Okay. Um, Laura, I had a question. Sure. Um, well, regarding this, Stuff that I would like to see you add if you can. Can I just email those to the email I have? Yes, that'd be fine. And then um, on the member services or or something that I would like for you to maybe touch base because I didn't know this until I did my research mm -hmm. that um, I believe some members have um, access to like a food program, um, I'm not really sure, but I guess I could call like member services for that. Just mm -hmm. Yeah, so. and I can I can double check on it as well and see about including it um, either alongside or near the, the webinar and things like that, or even put a little, make sure we put something on the website for people to see. Right, okay. So, yeah, I know we, I know the, there's a lot of, you know, and some of the health plans are a little bit different. So I don't know, uh, we ask, don't know all the nitty gritty to all of them, but I know that there are some resources available to assist people with different things. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Um, I also, of course, include all my resources on where I get my information so that, you know, I didn't totally make everything up. <laughs> so... And since I couldn't decide whether I wanted to go with a sandy beach and the starfish or the horses, I put both. <laughs> so horseback riding is another good exercise, too. Walking along a beach is a really good exercise. Very exhausting, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Let me see if I can get this down without <laughs> destroying everything. There we go. Okay, let me stop sharing that screen. There we go. Okay. And is there anything else? Um, no, no, not regarding this, I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm so glad you were able to attend. And like I said, we're going to try to post this um, on the website so that if, an, if you want to see it or if it's open to people that are not.